Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Abbe Fulbert Yolo Abbe Fulbert Yolo was a Congolese Roman Catholic priest who served as the first president of the Republic of the Congo on its independence. Yolo was born on the 9th of June 1917 in Madibo in Poole. At nine years old, he was baptized and christened Fulbert. In 1929, he entered the Petit Seminaire of Brazzaville where he proved to be a bright student. He completed his secondary studies at Akono, Cameroon. Thereafter, he entered the Grand Seminar of Yaoundé, where he did excellently in philosophy. He returned to the country and taught at the seminary in Mbamo before traveling to Libreville to round off his theological studies. Fulbert Yolo was ordained a priest on the 9th of June, 1946. He was posted to the parish of St. François de Brazzaville where he directed several sporting activities, youth organizations, and Catholic groups. Fulbert Yolo was very keen on politics. Encouraged by his mentor, Father Charles Lecomte, he ran for a seat in the African College in the territorial elections of 1947 in the district of Poole. But Yolo was soundly defeated. He realized that if he were elected, he would no longer appear so clearly supported by the missions. He decided to give himself over to the African resistance. This did not please his superiors. Moreover, in October 1953, a complaint of adultery was made to the diocese against Yolo. As a disciplinary measure, he was reassigned on the 20th of November 1954 to a mission in the forest at Mindoli, where he was employed as the headmaster of a Catholic school. During his time at St. Francois, Yolo made an impression as a Larry orator and gained a huge followership. In October 1955, a Congo council chose him as their representative for the upcoming legislative elections. When his candidature was announced, he was banned from wearing the cassock and from celebrating the mass. Not to be deterred, the Congo supplied a monthly passion for him and even a car with a driver to meet his needs. Initially, Yolo's supporters held him as the reincarnation of Jesus Matsua, an idea encouraged by the fact that he was a priest. Matswanisme was a messianic movement against colonialism founded by Andre Matua. Yolo became a living symbol of colonial resistance. He took to bathing in the Lofo Lakari Falls in his cassock, praying and calling upon the powerful ancestors. Allegedly, his clothes don't get wet even when he was immersed. In spite of violence, coercion and intimidation by Yolo's followers, he lost in the 1956 elections for deputy of Central Congo to the incumbent Jean-Félix Chikaya. However, that same year, he was elected as the first black mayor in French Equatorial Africa. Two years later, on the 8th of December 1958, Fulbert Yolo became prime minister. A year after becoming the prime minister on the 21st of November 1959, he was elected president of the Republic of Congo. In Yolo's regime, the use of extreme force and brutality on perceived opponents was legalized. The assembly passed laws that gave the president power to imprison, kill or exile any individual considered dangerous to the stability of the regime. Despite Yolo's excessive use of force against his adversaries, he was equally keen to bring them over to his side. On the 3rd of July, Yolo formed his second government, incorporating opposition politicians. On the 15th of August 1960, the day of Congo's independence, Jacques Opangold was made a Minister of State and Vice President of the Council, a very symbolic position. Finally, in January 1961, another opponent, Simon Kikonga Ngot, was made Minister of Economic Affairs. In the months following independence, a motion of no confidence in his government was proposed in the assembly. Offended, Yolo came up naked and pulled an AK-47 from his cassock in the middle of the assembly and forced the deputies to retract the motion. 
Congo was one of the most economically profitable French colonies. Between 1946 and 1959, a number of infrastructural projects were completed. So at independence, Yolo inherited a relatively healthy economy. But misappropriation and corruption were rampant in Yolo's government and these affected the nation's economy significantly. Austerity measures were introduced and top government officials lost their official cars, travel allowances and other things. However, the president, the ministers and the deputies were exempt from these measures. It was reported that for an official visit to France, Yolo had a whopping 59 billion CFA francs assigned for his personal expenses. Also, his wardrobe, which contained a full collection of cassocks in white, black and red, was supplied by the famous fashion designer Christian Dior. Even before independence, Congo Brazzaville was dominated by a single party. In August 1962, Fulbert Yolo announced his plan to institutionalize this one-party state in order to increase reconciliation and achieve national unity. He did not experience any serious opposition. Instead, the decision appeared to be well received by the MSA leader Jacques Opangold. In pursuit of this objective, a roundtable was organized for 3rd of August 1963, gathering the leaders of the three parties, UDDIA, MSA, and PPC, the relevant unions, representatives in the National Assembly, and leaders of the Congolese Army. Although okay with a one-party state in principle, the unions refused to accept the system put forward by the head of state on the grounds that they appeared to serve only YOLO's interests. To express their disapproval, the unions decided to organize a protest strike on the 13th of August. The night before the planned protest, YOLO had the principal union leaders arrested. When this news was announced, the simple protest transformed into a big anti-governmental action. The protesters planned to raid the prison in order to free the union leaders, leading to clashes with security forces. When they finally succeeded, the arrested leaders could not be found. The anti-governmental protest became a massive riot. The country was paralyzed. With the help of the French army, order was re-established. That evening, YOLO instituted a curfew, declared a state of emergency, and called for calm on the radio. In the evening, the government was dissolved. However, the ministers Jacques Opangold, Stephanie Cicilli, and Dominique Nzalakanda were not relieved of their positions. When it was announced that the very unpopular Nzalakanda had been retained, the militant supporters of YOLO decided to join the protesters. On the morning of 15th August, the mob marched on the presidential palace and demanded YOLO's resignation. YOLO called the then French president and requested assistance, but this was declined. Accepting the situation, YOLO put in his resignation. His successor as head of state, Alphonse Masamba Debat, helped him escape to the Democratic Republic of Congo, Leopoldville, on 25th March 1965. On the 8th of June 1965, a trial of YOLO by popular tribunal began in Congo Brazzaville. He was accused of genocide and misappropriation of public funds. Furthermore, he was held responsible for the death of the three unionists during the assault on the prison on the 13th of August 1963. The courts condemned him to death in his absence and ordered the nationalization of all his property, notably a farm at Madibo and two luxury hotels in Brazzaville. YOLO defended himself against these accusations by the publication of a book, Je Accuse La Chine, that is, I Accuse China, in 1966. In 1965, after being refused permission to settle in France, YOLO was sent to Spain, where he was treated well. The socialist and a revolutionary regime that took over from YOLO blamed him for all the country's problems. His name was taken off public discourse. It was in this atmosphere that YOLO died of hepatitis in Madrid on the 5th of May 1972. After being disrobed from the priesthood, 
he married several wives. At the time he left office, he was a practicing polygamist with four wives and many children. What have we missed out on this biography of YOLO? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.